Hello there, folks. I hope you're all doing well. Richard Tice here, the head of headbanging over at Reform UK, decided to take his one-man stand-up comedy routine of Brexit denial jokes over to Jeremy Vine's show on Channel 5. As we have previously discussed many times on this channel, Jeremy Vine on 5 is a rotten programme. Right-wing nutjobs all too often get a free pass to tell ridiculous untruths and talk all-round gibberish, because the host is unwilling to push back against them, and the other panellist is more often than not ill-equipped in the brain cell department to challenge with any precision the lies they are hearing. Unfortunately for Tice, Gemma Forte was booked on this occasion, and she is a seasoned professional in taking down these Brexiteer hacks like she is shooting fish in a barrel. I won't show the entire segment because it is long and agonising, so we will focus on the moment a small business owner calls the show to describe how he has seen his costs soar since the implementation of Brexit. It's worth noting how utterly contemptuous the response of Richard Tice is here. He isn't interested in the plight of small businesses and it's written all over his face. So let's take a look. You can eat James in Dorset High. Hello, hello. I'm um, sorry, you caught me by surprise, eh? Well, um, oh, God, um, really? Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to start by saying I have massive respect um, for Gemma. I, I just think she's she's incredible. And uh, anyway, big fan. Um, and zero respect for you other two. Not a jot. I'm a small business owner. And are you there? Yeah, well, yeah we're, we're actually listening. That's how uh, it works. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, oh, the sheer arrogance of Vine. It's enough to make you sick. Um, yeah, I, I'm a small business owner and I take past events throughout the year. I know probably four or five hundred business owners. And when I say a business owner, I'm just a, a small sole trader. I sold prints, frames, at events throughout the year, flower yeah. shows, that kind of thing. And pretty well every cost of mine material-wise has gone up since Brexit um, because a lot of it comes from abroad. Um, glass, my moulding, and so I've kind of been... I would love to buy stuff in the UK, but obviously it's a time and a half more, and so I try, I try, and, cut, try and keep my prices. And Where, when I where are you importing others, from? Other EU countries? Other, other EU countries and countries that, that the product comes via France because it comes over on containers. Yeah, Richard, that is and a problem. Let's just get this try, look, Richard, on that. No, no, look, there's a free trade agreement between oh. us and the EU, uh, yeah. so there are not tariffs on goods that come well, from... Why the is he this having is a, to pay more, then? Because of other factors, such as energy costs. It's got nothing... There are no tariffs... <laughs> is it? Gemma, okay. Gemma, don't lie no, to the people, in Gemma. The, in there are no tariffs... Wow. There are no tariffs on goods between the EU and the UK. Is this that is correct or not? This is what Brexiteers who, like yourself, the charlatans that sold it in, say. James has just explained about his small business. And in but the break, I said to you about small businesses being happy. And you said verbatim, well, small businesses are only 10% of businesses. And no, I was like, oh, right. I didn't say that, Gemma. Again, don't lie. What I said was the regulations that we haven't taken advantage to deregulate is the issue. Right. There are no so tariffs between the EU and the UK. No, we, uh, maybe we have... Everything comes back to deregulation with these feckin' liars. Make no mistake, deregulation means to lower standards. And that has been the aim of the likes of Farage and Reese Mogg and co since day dot, because they would benefit financially from it. Uh, this is why Reese Mogg proposed the bonfire of EU laws and regulation when he was the minister for uh, Brexit opportunities. I mean, I, I can't, it makes me feel nauseous even saying it. We had a minister for Brexit opportunities. Oh God, we're a laughing stock. Anyway, uh, the implementation of that bonfire of EU laws and regulations would have been the worst of both worlds because it would have allowed shitty goods and produce into the United Kingdom. But any goods and produce being exported from the UK to the EU would have been required to meet their higher standards. Just picture the scenes. Corporations being able to create substandard products on the cheap for the domestic market but being required to create higher quality products for the European market. This is total insanity. Essentially, the United Kingdom would become a giant wish or timu. 
Had Peter Bone came in and he did this, this uh, you know, former Wellingborough MP, did, 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 took this line. And I looked it up afterwards, and it seems that what causes the problem, James, is, is paperwork and checking and regulatory hassle. Um, hassle. Is that right, James? Yes, it is. I mean, I, I, it, I'm not the one who has to deal with that, but the companies that I'm buying this stuff of have all said their costs have gone up and the red tape and whatever else. So I'm yeah. myself so it might not, be, not. So both things could be true. You might be paying more, but there might be no tariffs. I remain as surprised as ever. People don't seem to realise the additional costs faced by those importing and exporting, despite having a free trade agreement with the European Union. It's no substitute for the previous arrangement. Being free of tariffs doesn't mean we are free of imports and export declarations, product standards, documentary requirements and inspection requirements. All of these come at additional costs to the business owner, which they then, of course, pass on to the consumer. Richard Tice obviously knows all this, but he is a bullshitting charlatan. So let's hear him get out of this so they've worked out a way of, of doing a so and that is true because our ridiculous civil servants have unnecessarily imposed extra paperwork that we don't need to do mm. checking goods coming across for example it was just recently when i was on a few weeks ago we've added an extra level of, of tariffs on on certain fruits and vegetables Why are coming you in. surprised that we don't have the benefits of membership anymore when we're not members Again, I just go back to my point. Germany's in recession. Yeah, oh, that's you said that. the only point you've got. But, but I'm going to retweet everybody the, 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 the answer that because, you do. Because, it's on Twitter. It's beautiful about what to do to the whataboutery of Germany. I'll retweet okay, all right, it. Well, we've had just for context here, Tice brought up Germany being in recession many times during this debate as if it was the silver bullet and vindicates our decision to leave the European Union. Of course, however, the recession in Germany is caused by external issues such as an over-reliance on Russian energy, which Gemma Forte points out during an earlier exchange. Germany, don't right, answer it, Gemma. That's no. why you hate but, it. But, I, but isn't, it, isn't it the case that, so I'll just give an example from home. During COVID, my, my youngest daughter set up a little business selling selling jewellery. And, I mean, I just watched it from a distance and she actually started to, to do quite a lot of business. And what I discovered was stuff was bouncing back from EU countries. So she was, and it's a bit heartbreaking because she was 14. So she was sending stuff to, to particularly Germany, actually. And it was coming back because of some sort of regulatory thing. And it might have nothing to do with tariffs, but it's just that they don't like us anymore. Oh, Jeremy, please do me a favour. You hit the nail on the head when you said it's a regulatory thing because our regulations are no longer aligned with EU regulations. It has nothing to do with them not liking us. The tat your daughter cobbled together in her bedroom likely doesn't meet the requirements for the European Union. If we were still in the European Union, perhaps she would be having fewer problems. But we ain't. But Jeremy Vine seems to believe there's German custom officials stood around going, uh, What is this? Uh, this... Uh, this... Jewelry sent by a little girl from the United Kingdom. Send it back. No, 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 not happening, Jeremy. It's all in your head. And and you know, that that is a question that uh, the issue of regulations. But we is, can't make them like us if they don't. It's not a question of liking. It's just a question of properly implementing the free trade agreement that exists just, between how's... the European Union and the UK. That's mm. the issue, and it's our civil servants that have imposed unnecessary regulations on goods coming from the EU, which is why people with small businesses who are suffering those sort of things. That's like our just, stupid yeah, civil I, servants. I, I think it was happening at the German. End. Well, yet again, Tice continues to hide behind the notion a free trade agreement means absolutely bloody everything about it is free. As previously discussed, there is all kinds of hidden costs. What a charlatan. What a fraud. Ugh. And there's going to be plenty of people voting for his party at the next election. It will actually help. Labour win a significant majority, but uh, it still pains me that people are turning to the likes of Richard Tice.
terrifying stuff. Anyway, cheers for watching, folks. I'll catch you again soon.